in an awe experience, there is certainly an element of all this stuff that you and I get involved with and every day go designated as reality. The stuff we sit in, the stuff we live in, the stuff we drive, uh, the people we encounter, the dogs we pet, the stores we go to. In an awe experience, there's another component as well. And it is a component of no thingness, which is a problem for the human mind. The human ego mind doesn't like this awe stuff. It doesn't like it because it's not in control anymore. When we get swept up and delivered somewhere else, the mind is no longer control, and the mind likes to be in control. The ego mind continues to control its environment is by understanding. We understand, that's how we do it. And as long as the ego mind can understand or pretend to understand, then it's just fine. And, but it runs the other way when this all stuff shows up and it can no longer understand. And we get delivered to a place where we have a decision to make. And that decision is, are we gonna to continue to try falsely and futilely to understand, or are we gonna to surrender to, to that something bigger and that something deeper, and are we gonna to learn to understand? That's the question for us. Are we gonna to learn to understand? The ones that can best teach us about understanding are little children. Because they, they just come in, they just know how to do that. That's what they, they understand until we beat it out of them and uh, try to get them to understand. No, they can teach. If you've ever spent any time around an oncology unit in a major uh, medical center, and of course these are pretty sober, somber places <coughs> because everybody's dying or helping somebody to die or trying to keep from dying or whatever. So there's a little bit of awe in the air, like everywhere. And it's a little bit quiet. But sometimes I hear a rumble in the hall, uh, uh, a ruckus, a uh, turmoil. Uh, some, something was, something's happening out in the hall. And, and I, I run out into the hall and I look and there, coming down the, coming down the hall, straight at me, fast as they can go, a little bald five-year-old girl pedaling her big wheel as fast as she could go uh, with her parent pushing the, the chemo drip bag as fast as they could go to try to keep up with uh, this, this little girl, this five-year-old ch bald child uh, trying to move down the corridor full of enthusiasm, full of gusto, full of zeal, right there. In that place, in that moment, in that image, is what we're dealing with in this journey that we're taking together. In this struggle, in this tension, in this paradox that is our existence, right there is where it is we have the opportunity to discover authentic life. And if we don't discover it there, we're not going to discover it anywhere. That little kid that knows how to understand, that knows how to be there, and there find authentic hope, find authentic love, find authentic peace, find authentic joy, find authentic confidence, uh, find authentic guidance, find authentic comfort. These are the things we're all looking for. And if we can find out how to do it there, then we're probably going to be okay.